The dance industry has grown over the last decade, and with it, so have pirate radio stations. There are now 177 in the country, the vast majority of which are from London. First of all, it started off as a laugh, where you just go up on the air and just, you know, people were just ringing up asking for like shouts and all that. And then, and then they realised how much important it started becoming because people wanted to hear their stuff all the time. And at the time, you know, it was, the rave scene was massive. It was a beginning scene. You had, you know, that it was the first stage of people dancing all through the night and just going out. So then they could promote that through the radio stations where they would go on from Friday night. 7 o'clock, and then the rig would shut off at Sunday night, 12 o'clock. The pirate radio thing in, in London has always been big, and it's always been a part of the music industry scene. It's always been a part of the scene. Um, going back to, I'd say, JFM, Solar, Horizon, Invicta, um, LWR, uh, to name a few. But um, it's always been a part of of the underground music scene all since uh, the beginning of this explosion of, of music, you know. This enthusiasm in the growth of the pirate radio scene is not shared by all. The Radio Communication Agency, a division of the Department of Trade and Industry, have been set up specifically to deal with these illegal broadcasters. What are the specific problems caused by pirate broadcasters do they actually cause much interference to emergency services? Pirate broadcasters steal frequencies from other radio users, they cause interference to services like the emergency services, and they interfere with people who want to listen to broadcasts which are made legally. And there are many instances of interference to safety of life services, which include air traffic control. What methods of tracking and enforcement do you use, and how effective are they? Well, the main transmitters are very easy to find because, as I said, they're on top of tower blocks and they're very easy to find indeed. The studios are more difficult, but we do have means of tracing them, um, sometimes technical means. We, we can trace uh, microwave or VHF links. What penalties can you face for pirate broadcasting? The a maximum fine uh, at Crown Court, if you took it to a, a Crown Court in front of a jury, is, is, uh, is unlimited. There is no limit to the, the fine, or it might be up to two years' imprisonment. The other thing that happens is that if we go to court, we will always ask for forfeiture of the equipment um, and anything else which is in the studio at the time that we seize it. And we invariably get that. And while the level of fines may not be particularly high, it's losing the record collection and losing the studio equipment, which really hurts the pirates. Taste FM is one of South London's leading garage stations, founded by Smokey and Uncle. Like all pirate broadcasters, they face a constant game of cat and mouse, trying to avoid detection from the authorities. DJ Vex in the house. One, two, what are you gonna say, you know? My DJ bobbing it's yo, three, come and follow me. It's a part of my car, we get this MC, and now four. But I don't the core. I saw my DJ bobbing it, draw five. Now get it, put a bubble inside, take the fence with the vibe. Why and how did you start Taste FM? Well, the reason why we actually started it was to reach out to more of the, um, the public, so we create a wider audience of people in the rave scene. Well, basically, you've got to have your team behind you. If you haven't got a team, you haven't got because you've got to do everything. One man can't do everything. You need your team. You need the guys. You know, to start the station. I had a little team, I've still got a little team, and it's those same guys from two years up yeah. to now. It's music, it's all about music anyway, you know what I mean? It's all about the love for music. Yeah. And trying to provide what the people want. When you avoid detection basically by not using silly equipment, it all starts with what, what you're using, microwave, band, you know. Microwave is microwave, un untraceable. Yeah. And you can use your bands. Yeah. So really the only way that they get like the studio rates and things like that is loud music being played. You get patches, didn't you? Yeah. You get patches where you could be hit twice in a week. Like, right. then you get they, months not hit. If they know that you've got a rave coming up, they're most likely to leave you alone for a little while. I mean, you don't get away with it. You get into trouble. Yeah. You put your transmitter up, you expect to be on this weekend or in the week. And everything.
before and then you, don't, you don't know what their intentions are. Their intentions are this week you are coming down. So the two intentions don't work. So that's your problem. On this station, all that I've just been on the roof, getting caught putting a transmitter up on the roof by the, by the council and the police. The teacher is to knock down the club and then the taste just rotates. Every week, every week, they yeah, rotate and giving yeah. people what they want now because they're tuned into the flavor. Yeah, yeah. And once they're tuned into my flavor, it's all about the taste. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It seems clear that the existing deterrents are having little effect on this growth industry. This is a matter which not only concerns the Radio Communication Agency, but the Radio Authority, who control access to legal broadcasting. Both authorities, however, seem very reluctant for change. The Radio Authorities say they aim to appoint licenses with a view to broadening listener choice and to provide a diversity of national services each catering for a wide range of tastes and interests. How is it then that there aren't any 24-hour jungle or garage stations? Well, obviously, we ha can only look at the applications that are submitted to us. Um, and quite often, we don't actually get people offering those type of service because it is the commercial radio industry and they have to be commercially viable, obviously, to exist. But with national radio, um, we have three frequencies in the government, two of which the government states what services they have to be and so we don't actually have full control over that. RCA figures show that there were 177 recorded pirates in 98. This figure has increased every year this decade. Does this not show a failure of the RA to address audience needs and cater for all sectors of the market? Well the problem here just lies in the fact that they're fre we have frequency scarcity and there's not, enough, there's not enough frequencies to go round. There's more people that want to broadcast than there are frequencies. So obviously, we're getting people that are falling outside of the system to try and get cheap radio, and it's not fair to the people in the system. No one wants to face prosecution, two years in jail, and unlimited fines. Does it not seem obvious that the reason people are taking this risk is to supply a demand that is not being met legitimately? That may be so. Um, it's a matter for the radio authority to decide how they will um, allow the broadcasting spectrum to be used. And what you will find is that they are making um, more and more franchises available for smaller local area stations. That, that's part of their policy. The radio figures that actually um, judge on a quarterly basis the listening habits of people show that only 1% of the population actually listen to pirate or other services. Is it your aim to encourage pirate stations to turn legal such as KISS or to prosecute them? We would certainly encourage people to be legal if they can. There's, uh, there's certainly, as I said, no, uh, no advantage for them in our eyes in flouting the law. What they have to be careful of, though, is that the law acts very much against them because if they get prosecuted for a pirate radio offence, then they can't uh, work on a legitimate station for five years. Do you not think the current lengthy licensing procedure, the high cost of legal broadcasting, and the fact that anyone convicted of illegal broadcasting is banned for five years do little to encourage pirates to become legal? The licensing procedure for legal procedure is not lengthy and it's not that expensive in, by all accounts. You can have services and pay something like £2 per annum to run a radio station in a small populated area and that figure can jump to 70000 in London. It really does depend on the number of people living in the area and also their short term licences that last up to 28 days and the cost for running one of those is between £5,000 and £10,000. Are the pirate broadcasters making a mockery of the legal system or are the authorities flouting their own codes of practice, limiting access and opportunity to legal radio? Call FM is one of the longest running pirate stations, recently celebrating its 10th anniversary. It's been home to some of the biggest names currently on the drum and bass scene, including Nicky Black Market, who has been DJing since the Acid House explosion. He has DJed on numerous pirate stations and co-owns the legendary Black Market Records. This shop is at the centre of the dance music industry and has seen it grow from illegal raves to international success. Do you think current legal stations cater adequately for drum and bass music? No, of course they don't. No, of course they don't. Which, which is a good thing as well, because then it keeps it underground again. Do you think the Radio Authority provide adequate opportunity for people such as yourself to start legal stations? 
Not at all, not at all. But then again, you know, it's got its good points and bad points. So. How's commercialism affected Pirate Radio? Uh, commercialism. To a certain degree, is there's good points and bad points. Because when you get the commercialism, the underground scene really does go back underground, which is a good thing, you know. But uh, certain things, of course, it kills it off once it begins. Commercial commercialism begins like any music, any type of form of music. Once it gets commercial, it's going to die off a lot quicker. I mean, drum and bass is a British musical movement, and you had in the in the seventies you had punk. In the early 80s you had the two-tone thing, and once they became commercial, it killed it off, you know. But I see, especially with drum and bass, it's going back underground again. It's, it's going to survive. Yeah. Being on Cool FM is like being on a pirate radio station, you've you got, you got a certain amount of freedom to um, perform as artists. Would you become legal if you could? I prefer to keep it as it is, I don't know, but... I prefer to keep it as it is. I prefer it as well. Yeah, why is that? Yeah, no, it's just, I, I find it a buzz in it. I think it's, it's, more, of, it's more of like a risk in it. Yeah. Also, like when I know before I was on the pirate station, when I was in this country, oh, I got a pirate station there. Tell me when I was younger than that. Yeah. And it, I think, yeah, I mean, there was a certain number, you know, because you want to impress certain people. We know at the end of the day, a lot of people regard it as something, not so much taboo, but something that you're not supposed to do or you're doing against others' wishes. Other people want to be in at that because you're naturally a re rebellious. But we don't mean it in a bad way. We only do it like that because there's no other way to do it. The vibes do really come from the fact that you're behind somewhere. No one can't see you really. You're kind of like secluded and everyone else is involved. So the pirate scene on itself is a good thing. No, no. I, no, I'll tell you what, the only reason I like it to become legal is because I don't get paid for DJing on it. Yeah, <laughs> but no, but no, no. Commercialism and legality are highly contentious issues within the pirate radio scene. Money is not all the stations strive for. The majority of DJs and MCs don't get paid for their services on the station. What is it that motivates them to give up their spare time and effort? and ultimately risk prosecution. It's not so much about the music for me, I think it's just the scene, that it's our vibe. It's jungle drum and bass is the way that we live, but entertain us, so therefore we need to take the rave scene a little bit better. Yeah. Um, other things are happening for us, not just the actual radio, but the radio is the sort of like artery, the main artery, the heart of our industry. Hobby as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, enjoy it, exactly. I mean, no one, would, no one would do it if they didn't enjoy it. We all enjoy it. You know what I mean? We all do enjoy it. People might moan now and again, but we still enjoy it. That's why we do it, you know what I mean? For the people, the love of the music, for the people, and seeing people just go mad dancing to the music, it's just a, a, a personal buzz, you know? Yeah. That goes for everybody, I think. It's what I want to do. It's what I want to do as a career, do you know what I mean? Not just DJing. Yeah. Um, I want to be on the radio, I want to play yeah. out. Yeah. I want to do my own promotions, do you know what I mean? Well. I've got a track coming out. Electric, yeah. do you know what I mean? I love the whole, the whole shebang. And yeah. to say that we're doing it for the money is wrong because a lot of us don't do it for the money. A lot of people, or well, there was a lot of hype about extravagant wages and this, that, and the other. And I mean, we won't go into the millennium bug thing, <laughs> but it's more of a being able to do it, like being able to get up and MC or DJ is more of a thrill and payment for me than actually receiving any cash benefit. Because at the end of the day, cash can only be spent. The vibes that you make and create, you can it take them with you forever. Exactly, it can always be with you. Why is it important to have pirate radio? Oh, I mean, it's part of the whole thing, really. I mean, you've got your the radio, you've got the club, you've got the DJ, you've got the shop like here. You know, it's the whole part of the circle. And you take that bit out, there's obviously a bit missing, you know. Yeah. There's be a chunk missing, so obviously it's a very important role for promotion, promoting the music, keeping the music alive. Because it keeps the underground scene alive in mm. London. It's like, not everyone can afford to go out every weekend. To keep the music going, keep it alive, innit? Because if there wasn't no, and not only that, so then people know where to go to listen to the music. You know when we go to Ray, you know, like say, like, I mean, if I drop a track, 
and like yeah. and, and 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 for example, um, the wiki tune. You won't know it, but like the wiki tune, yeah. You know, if you drop that, everyone's gonna go go mad. Go mad. And the only way they go mad is they've heard it on right. radio. It may be that they feel their own particular brand of music uh, isn't being met. They may feel that there is some ethnic local need which isn't being met. Um, sometimes we know that the, the pirates, uh, pirates um, uh, use their, their disc jockeys so that they can get better known in the clubs, so the clubs have some backing. And sometimes also that there are some links to more organised crime, like drugs for example. Well quite often people w want to be outside of the system, they want to um, buck the system and they get away with obviously pirate radios, get away with without paying any fees. And, um, that's perhaps why they exist, but it's not really for us to say. Where do you see the future of pirate radio going, and how will new technologies such as digital radio affect that? The thing is, of course, that with digital technology, that um, the um, the operation of the multiplex, as it's called, the number of digital stations that you get on a single channel, will be controlled very much by the people who actually own that multiplex franchise. So the chance for pirate broadcasters, uh, illegal broadcasters, to get on there is zero effectively, they simply will not get onto, um, onto, a, onto the digital multiplex. Some people have done it where, alright, you've got a digital display and your station that you tuned in comes in, like the big ones, Capital, I think Freak FM done it and a couple other ones done it. But what I was told and what I could see on my indication that because it was new technology and it wasn't actually sussed out then there was problems happening where it was interfering with other um, stations around it and it was coming out on other frequencies. I don't know whether culturally it's a good thing or not. I mean, uh, from our point of view, as managers of the spectrum, all we're concerned about is that people use it within the rules and they use it legally. Um, if there is some cultural need that's not being addressed, then, then they must uh, try and find the legal outlet. The digital advancement poses a considerable threat to the existence of pirate radio. There is a constant battle of technology, with progress on either side being counteracted by the other. The pirate broadcasters seem adamant they will be able to find a way around the digital advantage held by the RCA and RA, but the future is uncertain. What do you think the extinction of pirate radio would mean? There'd be an outcry, and as far as I'm concerned, you can't just take away something that other people have got up and done near enough of their own back for near enough 10 years, oh, ain't yeah. asked you for a penny, and they've done it, and then you decide to heavy-handedly um, sort of like wipe them out. I wouldn't say there's going to be a revolution or anything, but there would be an outcry. Because, yeah, I mean, be, uh... being quite frank, I don't think you could you could possibly now at this stage sort of like wipe it out. No way. You can't make our scene extinct like the music, the pirate radio scene. Someone would be daring enough to try and put it back on. Oh. But at the same time, it's like there's no way that they can take away the good work that we've done, like bringing people together, that making it, I mean, this is a British music format well, that was exactly. never ever seen before. Nothing like this was ever encountered before. Like there was all talk about R&B and hip hop and reggae, ragga music, but this is our UK drum and bass jungle music, which we made. So therefore, as British citizens, we should hold on to it for dear life. Look after it, man. It's actually. <laughs>
Ready for the rock around. Brock, let's show them how we throw it down. All right, cry. It's all about the elements, the elements of sound. Are you ready now, myself? Take it out of the turn, I'm gonna be right around with a bit of alcohol, what I'm gonna do with a bit of pressure. If you're dead up, take it out of the turn, I'm gonna be right around with a bit of alcohol, what I'm gonna do with a bit of shot, what I'm gonna do with a bit of shot, who should be down through now, eh? And I'm gonna have to do my second of that, but who would have been some spin out of five and second of who should be down through now, eh? And I'm gonna have to do my second of that, but who would have been a bit of 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 a Say hello, say up high, better better move it, move it time. I can spy a raven eye. Say hello, say up high, better better move it, move it time. I can spy a hood. And is, is the people that make it what it is. I mean, the, the people on the radio station, we work hard to make sure that we're on there every weekend. The management works hard to make sure the radio's on every weekend. And it's, it's just our way of... <laughs> stop, stop, stop. It's too long. Babbling on the radio. The radio is long, <laughs> long, long, You just ain't even talking it out. It's I'm long. sitting here, man. Long. <laughs> I, 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 I can sport all night, you get me? I've got a lot to say. <laughs> But it had to be spoiling your sleep for that. I won't put that there, it's ice cold, you know. This is what I did. Yeah, man, it's just too quick to... Can you just give me the pound back to your voice side of the code? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Getting drafted up like this. Anyway, it's your cuss, you're going to come out of here. Yeah. 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 How are you? What are you gonna do? You? Do you want me to say the question? Um, did we start? Brain's not in order yet. Um, I woke up yet? For the third one of you lot for this question. I mean, I mean, I see. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, man, chill out, Trump. Yeah, what, 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 your guy? Yeah, chill out. Oh, then. Oh, yeah, two minutes. Sorry, man, I'm gonna cut this shit out. <laughs> Get out, man, I'm doing like two minutes. Two minutes, I'm gonna cut it high. Come back in the middle. Come back in the middle. Come back in the middle. In the music, come, man. Right. Yeah, cut that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What am I doing? I'm looking at the camera. I'm looking at you, yeah, but look. <laughs> um, so can we do a little freestyle rap because we're all in there that my name's Shocky Dick Flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. You love it? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Thank you for your time, lads, and the most rewarding. Are you still filming? Yeah, we'll go through, man. I'd like to say, bro. Got to shine yourself, out. man. Uh, Bring me in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, thanks, innit? Just fine. <laughs> 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 sorry, the who? The, the radio authority. I Even up. you said something else then. Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! What? <laughs> 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 the radio authority. <laughs>